This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Dr. Teeth or in case if you're new here, welcome to Dr. Teeth. I am Dr. Hina and I make dental videos with an intention to simplify the topic for whoever is watching the video. Now since you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure that you want to learn and I'll try my best to simplify the topic and make learning easy and engaging for you all. Also in this video, I will be including entrance essentials which basically will be you know some key terms key points that will help you for the entrance examination the multiple choice questions will be there at the end of the video which you can go through and answer in the comment section below so without wasting any more time let's move on to the topic here pulp dental pulp so what do you understand by the term pulp in general so you must have seen the ads of the pulp, right? Mango pulp. What is that pulp? So pulp, it refers to animal or plant tissues which are moist and soft and they are, you know, clustered. Means they are as a mass. That is the, that is the literal meaning of the term pulp. Now, what is a dental pulp? So dental pulp also, you know, signifies the moist part of the tooth. It has blood vessels, it has nerves. It has, you know, gel-like substances, it has various cells. So all that, you know, it makes it a clustered mass, right? So that is the meaning of the pulp. And if you see here, we have this red or say maroon thing going on here. That signifies the pulp. So if I zoom in, here we have the enamel, which is in white, right? We have the dentine, which is in yellow. So, you know, this thing, the white thing, which is above this gingiva, means the crown portion, that is the enamel. But here, when you see the root, we have here cementum, okay? So, we don't have enamel in the roots. And in between them, we have the cemento-enamel junction, right? Then we have this yellow thing, which you can see, it is going all around. That is the dentine, right? And this is the pulp, okay? We have the nerves, blood vessels here. Now, this pulp, it can be divided into two parts. So, we have the CEJ here, okay? And CEJ here, cemento enamel junction. So, this thing which is above this line, that is the coronal pulp because it is in the crown. And this pulp, which is in the root that is called the radicular bulb okay and this entire space or say the chamber that is called as the pulp chamber okay now if you look at the shape of this pulp we can see that it is following the shape of the tooth our tooth is having this shape and our pulp is also having a similar shape right now let us look at the coronal pulp more closely so this is just a slice otherwise you can imagine that this must be a closed space inside right so if you see here you can find this lining here right this is the roof or say the occlusal surface okay and if you look at this side this will be the mesial this one will be the distal right and that side means towards towards this side we will have the buccal and towards this side we will have the lingual and then the last one and towards the bottom we will have a floor okay so we have six surfaces in the coronal pulp now 
you see these structures here right these projections these are called as the pulp horn now at the periphery the pulp is circumscribed by special odontogenic region and these are the odontoblast which are the dentin forming cells then we have the cell free zone which is called the wales zone and the cell rich zone now what happens is during tooth development the odontoblast which are present here they can move towards the pulp okay so when they move towards the pulp they will actually be entering the cell free zone okay so this is the reason why this zone is kind of hidden or invisible during the early stages of dentinogenesis because the odontoblast is moving pulpward so they are occupying this space so when this space is occupied by the odontoblast it is hidden means you cannot see that right in the cell rich layer we have fibroblast and undifferentiated mesenchymal cells so fibroblast here these are the principal cells in this area in the cell rich layer now the size of this pulp means how much bigger this area will be it will change by time with age right so as the person grows older what will happen this dentine formation keeps on happening okay so when more dentine is formed this area will become less means means the size of pulp will become smaller and remember that the formation of dentine happens more at the floor compared to the roof or the side walls all right now now coming on to the radicular pulp so it extends from the cervical region to the apex right so this is the apex of the tooth or root and here it is continuous with the periapical connective tissue through a foramen that is called as the apical foramen so you can see all the nerves and vessels they enter through this foramen now talking about the size of this foramen so what happens is during root formation this apical end this is not closed this is open so it will be something like this and this oops this so it will be open and we will have a epithelial diaphragm here but with the time as the root formation proceeds dentin and cementum will form here and this area will become narrow and ultimately we will have a small opening that is the apical foramen so initially we had this wider thing right means this opening was not this small it was very wide but with the time there was dentin and cementum formation and this gets narrower now the apical foramen is 0.4 mm in diameter in the maxillary teeth and in the mandibular teeth it is 0.3 mm in diameter now one question which must be in your mind is that is the apical foramen located in the center of the root means you can see here this is not in the center obviously this is quite little bit in the center so what is the case with that you know does it always occur in the center or there is no such hard and fast rule so remember that the location can vary with functional or positional influences example if we have this tooth okay and i don't know if you can try and move this sideways or something i don't think i can move it sideways okay let us suppose we have this tooth and if this tooth has tipped let's say this is the mesial side and this tooth has tipped mesially so this apex will go distally right so on one side there will be cementum deposition and on the other side there will be cementum and dentin resorption right because it is tipping this side so it will apply force so there will be resorption here and there will be deposition here so based on that thing the position might change so this is one example also we don't have just one foramen there could be some accessory canals extra canals so let us suppose we have a accessory canal here mostly they are located in this apical third area so this canal or this opening is obviously a communication between the inside and the outside right so this is clinically significant because it is a means of spreading infection right 
like the infection which is inside can go here and infection which is here can go here okay so that is a channel now one question is how do these form how does the accessory canal form so one reason could be the loss of the root sheath cells means the root sheath cells they would have formed the dentin right so when dentin is not formed a communication can be established other reason is that if a blood vessel gets in this place like during formation blood vessel is already here so at the place of the blood vessel no deposition happened right so here there will be a accessory canal now let us see what the pulp consists of what is inside the pulp first of all we have the intercellular substance which is a gel like substance we have fibroblast which are the most numerous cell type and they are spindle in shape and they are involved in the collagen fiber formation and obviously we have the collagen fibers here because the fibroblasts will form them and the most common types are type 1 collagen and type 3 collagen also we have undifferentiated mesenchymal cells which are polyhedral in shape and also they are totipotent means they can form odontoblast fibroblast you know various kinds of cells based on the need so that is why we call them totipotent so i'm just giving you a general overview of the things which are present inside the pulp we will be learning about them in detail in the upcoming videos but just let us go through them one by one then we have the odontoblast which are the second most numerous cell type also we have defense cells which includes the macrophages dendritic cells mast cells plasma cells we also have stem cells which are pluripotent because they develop into adipocytes and the neural cells obviously we have the blood vessels right which arise from the inferior and superior alveolar artery and also they drain by the same vein in nerves we have majority of non myelinated nerves but later in life they will gain myelination okay so these were some of the things present inside the pulp okay so more details will be covered in the upcoming videos let us move on to the multiple choice question now what you have to do i will just be mentioning the question here with options and you have to mention the correct answer in the comment section below also after few days i will be posting all the answers in the description below okay the first question is the dental pulp is derived from options are dental papilla dental sac odontoblast stellate reticulum second question the pulp responds to all stimuli by pain why is that so the options are here question number 3 the second most prominent cell in the pulp are whale's zone of pulp is the cells occurring in the greatest number in the pulp are hint they are spindle shaped the size of apical foramen of maxillary teeth in adult is something which i have not told in this video but is important is the total volume of all the permanent pulp organ options are the development of pulp begins at so i think that's enough for today now do mention in the comment section below the correct answers of these and i hope that you found the video helpful don't forget to give a thumbs up also subscribe and share and also help us achieve our new year resolution that is to have 1 lakh subscribers by the end of this year so till we meet next time keep smiling and laugh is